Now, what about fully edentulous cases? Can we use the standard R to train these cases? Well, let's talk about this in more detail. Fully edentulous cases, the challenge in fully edentulous cases is that there is really no reference for the matching between the CBCT and the STL file or the model of the patient. You see here, the CBCT only allows us to see the bone of the patient. On the other hand, the impression that we have only shows the soft tissue of the patient. So how would we be able to match the model to the CBCT scan in this case? And that's why we need to know a little bit more about the fully edentulous protocol for the matching. So I would like to divide fully edentulous cases into two different sections. Number one will be patients who don't have dentures or with bad dentures. These basically fall into the categories of patients that don't have dentures. And we have patients who do have good dentures, and by good dentures we mean they fit good, the aesthetics are good, phonetics, and they function really well. So these are the two different methods, or these are the two different categories for fully edentulous cases. And let's see how we manage each one of those cases. So. Patients who don't have dentures or with bad dentures. Let's talk about this first. Patients who don't have dentures, the way we manage these cases is we always start with an impression. So in this case, I took impressions. And then the next step, what I will do is I will make what we call a special or an individual R2 tray. If you remember, just a few moments ago, we talked about the R2 tray and the main feature of the R2 tray was that the R2 tray is a radio-opaque tray, which means that it shows in the CBCT. And this is actually what we want. The idea here is the standard R2 tray will not fit in a fully edentulous patient's mouth. We need to fabricate a special R2 tray. In order for us to do that, what we use is we use triad, a certain type of triad, which is actually radio-opaque. So you see here, this is how we make a standard special tray for the patient, just like we usually do special trays for impressions. So this special tray was made with a special radiopaque triad. And on top of that, what we do is we put a layer of wax. And this looks like a bite block. And then this is the workflow for fully edentulous cases. Again, the models, resin basing, buildup of a wax worm, try in. And then we CBCT scan the patient wearing that bite block. Let's talk a little bit more about the try-in or what we do actually in the patient's mouth in order for us to be able to do our guided surgery. So in the try-in, what we do is this. What you need to check is you need to check that we have good labial fullness. We have the correct vertical dimension of occlusion. We have the patient's centric relation. And we mark the midline and we also mark the canine line just like we do in a normal bite registration process when we're fabricating indenture. Now the next step will be for me to send the R2 tray of the patient to the lab. And then what the lab does is that they scan this R2 tray. And I also CBCT scan the patient wearing the tray. And now in the CBCT that was taken with the special tray, you'll find right now I can actually see the base of the tray which is the radiopaque resin. And since I can see that, the next step will be for me to match the CBCT to the scan of the special R2 tray. So right here, you see that through the base of the tray, I was able to find matching points and I was able to merge the STL file of the tray to the CBCT file of the patient wearing the tray. Now, if you want to see this process in more detail, this is just a, a, a video recording of the R2Gate software. And what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to find the threshold that shows me that uh, tray. And since I can see the tray right now, this is the SDL file of the tray. And what I will do right now is I'll import the tray scan. And now what I will do is I'll go ahead and I'll find matching points between the tray and the CBCT. What I will use is I will use the top part, which is basically the resin part. I'm not going to use the bottom because the bottom is wax. I'll place one point in the center, 
one point on the left side and a third point on the right side. And then I'll merge my data together. And essentially, this is what I get. From the matching, I get the tray to match really well to my CBCT scan. And this is basically how we match a model to a CBCT scan for a patient that does not have a denture. This is how the base of the tray looks like in a CBCT. Again, since it's a radiopaque tray, I can see it really clearly. And right here is the wax rim. Now that I've matched the CBCT to the SDL file through my merging process, I will use the orientation lines or the reference lines for the midline, the canine lines. And through these, I'll go ahead and I'll design a digital wax up. My digital wax up will eventually help me know exactly where I'm going to be placing my implant. So again, just refer back to what we said at the beginning. We always want to plan the implants based on the position of the teeth. We would like everything to be prosthetically driven. What about patients that have dentures that are good dentures? They fit well, they look good, and the phonetics and functions are actually adequate. In these cases, do I really need to do all that previous workflow? And the answer is no. So let me go ahead and show you three alternative options for patients that already do have good dentures. Option number one, dual scan protocol using composite markers. So this is a denture that I have for my patient. This is the good denture that the patient has. And essentially all I've done was I've just added a few dots of flowable composite. I add about three to four dots on the buccal side and three to four on the lingual side. The next step will be for me to scan the denture using an intraoral scanner or a lab scanner. And this is the uh, SDL file that results out of the intraoral scan or the model scan, or in some cases, even a CBCT. And then I SDLize the CBCT and I get an SDL file out of it. This is how the upper model looks like as well. This is the intraoral scan of the upper model. Again, you could do that with a model scanner. You could do that with a CBCT if you can export an STO file from the CBCT. Next step would be for me to CBCT scan the patient wearing the denture. So here I have these composite dots. And based on these composite dots, I was actually able to merge the uh, denture of the patient to the CBCT. See here where I have the upper and lower models. I was able to uh, put that in the scan because I was able to match everything together through the uh, uh, composite dots. And then lastly, what we do is we just clip the inside of the denture and we use that as a model. Option number two will be to duplicate the patient's existing denture with radiopaque material like barium sulfate. In this case, the patient already has a denture. So what we did was we took a copy and we made a copy of this denture and we produced it with a little bit of barium sulfate. The reason why we did this, just to make sure that we could see the denture in the CBCT. As you can see here, I can see it really clearly. And the teeth in the denture will help us go ahead and plan the implants based on their position. So that's essentially the second option for us to match uh, a fully edentulous case for a patient that already has a denture. Option number three will be using a radiopaque polyvinyl siloxane or a radiopaque spray. So in some cases, if we're using a type of radiopaque uh, PVS or a rubber-based impression material, what we could do is we can reline the patient's existing denture with uh, polyvinyl siloxane. Or in some cases, if we have a radiopaque spray, like in this case, for instance, this is one of my cases, you could just simply spray inside the patient's uh, denture and through that you'll be able to identify the fitting surface. For you to see how that looks like, again, in this case, we use actually a combination of both. So you see here this small white line. This line here is actually what enables us to be able to identify where uh, the model 
outline is. So this is how we use a radio opaque reline material or how we use a spray, radio opaque spray, or a combination of both. So now we've covered all scanning protocols for fully edentulous patients.